Hey guys, Matt LaRosier here with Firearms Policy Coalition bringing you another weekly update just to make sure you have all the latest information on everything affecting your right to keep and bear arms. This week we have a new bill floating in the house called the Stop Home Manufacture of Ghost Guns Act. It makes you feel all warm and fuzzy, right? The bill is clearly intended to ban pretty specifically the Ghost Gunner, which is a desktop CNC machine great for cutting out 80% lowers. The bill calls for a ban on any device designed or redesigned, made or remade, and intended to be used primarily to make or convert a product into a firearm, frame, and receiver, and any combination of parts designed or intended in making such a device. Yeah, that was a lot of words, wasn't it? Well, the problem with that little piece of word salad I just read is that if you read it plainly, it could include a whole bunch of things like regular mills or CNC machines, because they didn't even bother to explain whose intent matters, the manufacturer or the machine's operator. The bill's so vague, arbitrary, and capricious, it would make King George blush. Next up, Northam's Infringement Show. This week we have Governor Northam of Virginia who hosted a ceremonial signing of several anti-gun bills that went into effect in the state this week. Some of these laws include a universal background check, red flag law, handgun rationing, and a law that would penalize people for letting their kids have access to a firearm regardless of how well trained the individual is. Moving on to restaurant news, we've got the footlong gun ban? Remember our subway shenanigans from last week? Well, it seems after a rather pathetic attempt at a PR campaign to compel Subway to ban open carry of firearms and other stores, it seemed the anti-gunners won. Or have they? Well, it turns out Subway seems only to have issued a revision to its store policy instructing staff to politely request that people not open carry or at least conceal their guns when they come into the store. Next up, Aloha Infringement. On Wednesday, the Hawaii Senate passed another gun control law which would require anyone permanently removing a firearm from the state to report its removal or face a $100 fine. Now, this is a pretty dumb law because Hawaii doesn't even know how many guns are in the state to begin with. And even if it does start tracking firearms exiting the state, it really won't help them figure it out. The bill seems pretty hard to enforce because the only way they'd know if a gun wasn't reported is if they find it or are aware it, of it being removed from the state, that is, you know, after it's not there anymore. Tracking the movement of goods on this scale is really impractical from a cost and manpower perspective. That said, of all the states, Hawaii is probably the hardest to move stuff out of on account of it, you know, being in the middle of a pretty substantial ocean. Now, last but not least, Boog Boys and BLM in Harmony? Despite the attempt of the media and anti-gun groups to label Boogaloo Boys as white supremacists and far white right extremists, they just keep defying these definitions. Over the 4th of July weekend, a group of uh, Boogaloo boys joined BLM protesters in opposing police use of no-knock warrants, citing the deaths of Breonna Taylor and Duncan Lemp. There was a twist, though. Remember how the media kept referring to a certain people as white supremacists? Well, when three individuals in the crowd outed themselves as actual white supremacists, both groups denounced them immediately. Of course, you're never going to see this in the legacy media sources like the Evening News, but that should serve as a reminder that stereotyping whole groups of people is not only an act of bigotry, but a common tool for ill-intended people to advance authoritarian agendas. Well, that's all I've got for you this week. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to know more, check out fpcnews.org, where you can find this week's edition and information on our legal and legislative efforts. If you think this content would be important to anyone you know, help us spread the word and tag them in the comments. Also, be sure to check out fpcgear.com, where you can get all kinds of Pro 2A gear like this shirt and help keep us in the fight. As always, keep your eyes on Firearms Policy Coalition, where we're keeping up the fight for all of your rights all the time. I've been Matt LaRosier, and I'll see you real soon.